Limpar. Fennec. Now Thomas. Lovely touch from Gascoigne. It's a great move from Tottenham. Has it produced the goal? No. Lineker and Gascoigne. And it's no exaggeration to say that that was world class. Howells trying to drop it over the top for Lineker. He's done just that. Gary Lineker. David Seaman just got part of his body to it. Mitchell Thomas. Really has been nothing between the sides in the second half. But now Lineker for Tottenham and David O'Leary with some heroic defending for Arsenal. Lineker can retrieve it on the right. Allen! Allen has got Walsh to his right. Lineker is the only other player up for Spurs. And Walsh gets past Davis and plays Paul Allen in for Spurs and Seaman was allowed to make the save. Some 90 seconds plus stoppage time. Nice dummy by Lineker. Here's Walsh. He's got Lineker up with him. And Seaman yet again. Liverpool gave Jimmy Carter his debut at Villa Park, their new £800,000 signing from Millwall. But it was one of the old school who kept them involved in the first half, Gravelar saving brilliantly from Platt. But Liverpool can tell stories about the ones that got away as well. McMahon going close against the club that sold him to Anfield. But Liverpool have now failed to win five of their last eight in the league. If nothing else, it offers a bit of encouragement to Arsenal and one or two others in with a bit of a chance. Great save that by Spink, wasn't it? He's having a good season. Positionally, there was little to choose between the two beforehand, but Southampton are enjoying one of their good spells. Their good players, like Rod Wallace, are right on song. After that encouraging start for the Saints, Luton played their part in the most entertaining game of the season at Kenilworth Road so far. And here's one of their goals of the season by Lars Elstra, 14 for him. And Luton, who won only one of their previous seven, went in front two minutes later with 20-year-old Julian James getting his second for the club sliding in on the synthetic, risking artificial grass burns to make it 2-1. But then to complete a hectic four-minute spell, Southampton drew level. Cherednik pulling the ball in, the Luton defence practising Glasnost, and that was easy for Matt Letizier. Into the second half, Southampton in front again. Lovely tight control here by Letizier for his 16th of the season and 10 in the last 10 games. Outstanding goal coming up, Southampton really buzzing. Alan Shearer, a fine exponent of touch play and a great foil for Letizia. And Wallace in this case, and that was Rod's 12th of the season, well over half an hour left. Now despite conceding a late penalty, Southampton went on to win their fourth game out of five and set up an enticing Rumbelow's Cup tie against Manchester United on Wednesday. Little shove in the back, Cherednik on Kingsley Black. Plenty of protest, but we reckon the referee was dead right. Now, John Dreyer gets up to all sorts of antics when he takes penalties, but he takes them well. 4-3, that's how it finished. So the top three only Crystal Palace gained maximum points. The only goal of the game came with 15 minutes to go. One of their unsung heroes, Eddie McGoldrick, penetrating and persevering to set up Mark Bright for his 12th of the season. Four points off the top, one of those in with a bit of a chance. Super goal this one from Norwich. Great touch from Robert Fleck to get Jeremy Goss away. Support arriving at the double and a perfect strike by Tim Sherwood. Even Lukic at full stretch couldn't keep it out. Confidence seems to come and go at Carrow Road, rather like a change in the weather. It's high-pressure stuff at the moment. Dale Gordon with Robert Fleck to thank. United are red-hot at the moment, and Mark Hughes is in a class of his own. But the man of the match was Lee Sharp. That's why, United two up after a quarter of an hour, Brian McClare with his 13th of the season, 5-5. Five five. 
before half time. Hughes getting his second of the match, 12th of the season. One defeat in 18, another side with a bit of a chance. Troubled times at Stamford Bridge, but at least Chelsea ended a losing sequence of four games on the trot. A goal in each half by Gordon Dury against a QPR side that's lost 12 of the last 15 games. Dury's 10th of the season was a brilliant header, leaving Rangers one off the bottom and with the worst defensive record in the division. 5-4 the last time they met, Forrest the losers in the Rumbelows Cup, despite a Nigel Clough hat-trick you might remember. Well, Steve Grizovic bringing Clough down there after an extraordinary back pass by Cyril Regis. Now, Clough missed the penalty, but it had to be taken again because of encroachment. So up stepped Stuart Pearce for his first penalty attempt since the World Cup semi-final. Similar outcome, but not the time and place for tears. It's certainly not in Pearce's nature when there's still work to be done. Nigel Clough almost got into a goal-scoring position for Forrest first, but it would have been akin to stepping in front of an Intercity Express going at full pelt. Pierce 1-0, and no-one was about to argue. But Clough, courtesy of Pierce, eventually got into the goal-scoring act. The ball sitting up nicely, the execution perfect. Coventry had gone five without defeat, and they've certainly tightened up at the back, but they were missing key players through injury, and it was over as a contest by the time Roy Keane added to his growing reputation with a classy goal to make it 3-0. Only Roy Wagley scored more First Division goals so far this season than John Fashionu. Fashionu's was the outstanding contribution to the game, opening the way for Terry Gibson to get the first. Fash's 12th in the league was debated by Peter Shilton, who thought he'd been impeded. Whichever way you look at it, hardly a goal of the day contender. Now, we're off to Derby for the match next Sunday. It'll be worth it just to watch Dean Saunders. He's not just a goal scorer, he's unselfish, brave, resourceful, cheeky. All that enabled Derby to get back into the game through Mick Harford. But Fashionu had the final say, through the middle, no attempt to play the ball. Mark Wright's challenge certainly open to interpretation. Fashionu's 13th of the season and his only penalty. Poynton, White, Ebro for Everton. That's a lovely ball, but there was a suspicion of offside not given though as Nevin goes on. Well saved, it comes to Beagree. Sanchez. Peter Pigree scores his first ever goal for Everton and gives us a celebration to remember. Pigree doing well to find Sharp. And McCall goes in hard again on Ward. This is Pigree. Cut out by Hendry. Back in from Pigree. Sheedy with a spectacular goal! Goal by Kevin Sheedy.